Hello everyone, welcome back to KXA and Live. I'm Esmeralda Zamora and we're so happy to have you here once again. Today we're going to go ahead and kick off our Space Space segment with Eric Henriksen. Eric, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm excited. Tonight we get a special event for everybody and we're going to talk about that today. Yeah, that special event is a supermoon partial lunar eclipse. Talk to us first, what is a supermoon or a partial lunar eclipse? I'm going to throw an extra one in there and a harvest moon on top what? of that, but I'll get to that in a minute. Let's talk about the supermoon first. So the moon orbits the earth, everyone knows. Everyone knows that, right? Okay, just double checking. So the moon <laughs> orbits the earth and it doesn't orbit at like a perfect circle. It's kind of offset a little bit. So like if this is the earth, it's kind of like this. So it's like there's parts where it's closer to the Earth and, and parts where it's further away, right? And so the supermoon occurs a few times a year. It's where it reaches that full moon uh, time period when it's closest to Earth. So it appears larger than we typically see it. You know, the moon's usually pretty far away. Well, this it looks like a giant moon. I don't know if you went out last night. I was kind of getting a little nerdy. And I was walking the dogs and just staring at the moon. And it just looks so big. And this is also the harvest moon. So the harvest moon occurs around September, and by around September, I mean around the equinox uh, that occurs, the autumnal equinox, uh, when autumn, when summer ends and fall begins. And so most moons get a special cool name. This one's called the harvest moon because it is occurring around that equinox. The rest of them are named after the month they take place. And so this is the one exception. It's also been called things like the corn moon, and it's, it's generally around the world. It's just like the harvest moon. It's when the harvest happens for farmers. So this this year we get a supermoon and a harvest moon back to back. You know they're one and the same, which is which is pretty cool. You can also get a supermoon during a new moon when uh, it's completely darkened and blocked by the Earth, but and not getting the sun's rays. But uh, during that you can't see it, so it's it's not as, as impressive as a supermoon like that one we see there. Yeah, it's huge. It's gonna look huge tonight. It's really cool. I think the supermoons are awesome. So what is the best way for us to go out and watch it? I know yesterday I also went out and I was playing soccer with my brother and the, it was 6 p.m. and the moon was out. Yeah, it'll be out pretty early around this time of year. Uh, I'm going to talk about eclipse seasons in a second. But the, what happens during eclipse season basically is the sun, the moon's like closer to the center of its rotation uh, vertically, <laughs> I guess is the best way to phrase that. So it's, it's kind of lower to the horizon. So it comes out a little earlier. Uh, tonight, we'll have the partial lunar eclipse, and I'll talk more about that in just a second. But around 744, you should be able to see the moon pretty clearly and start seeing that partial eclipse, and that's going to last till close to midnight. So you'll be able to see it pretty early in the night, go out and look. And luckily, according to the weather is pretty nice. It's pretty clear night. I mean, there's some light clouds in the sky right now. But kind of like last night, it's going to be some, a few clouds here and there, some scattered clouds, but you'll be able to see it. It'll be a good view for tonight, for sure. And when we have the um, eclipses during the day, we are not allowed to look at the sun with just our bare eyes. Is this the same thing for lunar eclipses? It is not the same thing with lunar eclipses. So during a solar eclipse, remember in April we got the total solar eclipse. And we spoke a lot about that at the time. But with that, it's you're looking at the moon's blocking the sun's light. With a lunar eclipse, the Earth is blocking the sun's light from hitting the moon. So it's a reverse kind of. Mm -hmm. Before the moon's in the middle, now the Earth's in the middle. And so we're not actually looking directly at the sun. In this case, we're just looking at the refraction, or refraction of its light through the Earth's atmosphere hitting the moon, which is why it gets that red color. It kind of, uh, when blue light hits, when the sun's light hits the Earth, it gets dispersed, right? So blue light is what we see here on Earth, and the other colors kind of get scattered out. But during sunset, as the sun gets closer to the edge of our horizon, the reds and the oranges peek through and they can actually scatter through our, our, uh, through our atmosphere. The same thing happens to the moon. We're getting that scattering effect of our light hitting, or the sun's light hitting the earth and getting scattered and hits the moon, which is why it turns that red color during a lunar eclipse. But yeah, you can look at it. You can go out and look right at it. You don't need any special glasses or anything. It's just, it'll be about the same brightness as our moon, a little dimmer on a typical supermoon night. So pretty bright, but dim, dimmer than typically happens, but not, not to a noticeable degree. I mean, to a noticeable degree, but not to a like, noticeable degree. It's not <laughs> like it's, oh no, a big chunk of the moon's missing, kind of like with the solar eclipse where a big chunk of the sun was missing. So it's, it's, about, it's all about perspective. It's, it's an illusion, essentially that it's going to you know, have that red hue on it, maybe a little chunk taken out of it from our shadow, but it won't be a point where you can't look at it. Yeah, you can look right at it, which is kind of cool. 
Interesting. So t tell me a little bit about the schedule of these eclipses, lunar eclipses. So we have an eclipse season, which is kind of wild. It's So as I mentioned earlier, the, the moon orbits the earth and the sun, and the moon and the earth orbit the sun together. It's this whole system. And a couple times a year what happens is the earth, as it's going, the moon typically is like orbiting like this. I'm trying to do this with the camera so as <laughs> I can. It orbits kind of like this. And at some points, it's going to hit this spot where it's about even with with the Earth. So it's kind of near our equator where then it's also kind of not the equator, but like the even line between the Earth and the sun and the moon. They all form like a line. This eclipse season happens twice a year. We get lunar eclipses twice to four times a year, just depending on the year, depending on how orbits sync up in the right way. Uh, so we have an eclipse season now. We had an eclipse season earlier this year. We had a lunar eclipse in March, and just a few days later, we had the total solar eclipse. So that was that first eclipse season. This is the second eclipse season of the year, and this is our last one for the year. So this is your last chance to see an eclipse this year. Next year, we got two more on the schedule, though. So if you miss this one, don't worry. They, they come back around, luckily. So you can see those pretty often. And then we have the next. Next year's 2025. 2026 is the next total solar eclipse. And that'll be uh, 2026, and it's going to be going through Iceland and Spain. So if you want to see that one, you got to go to Iceland and Spain. But the lunar eclipses, what's cool also about them is if you are seeing nighttime, you can see them. So next year we get one that we can see here, but we can't see the other one because it's not nighttime during that eclipse in the Americas. It's going to be on the other side of the world. This one tonight is going to be able to see by most of the world. We'll be able to see this. There's a part of Asia I think that's kind of cut off, but most of the world's going to kind of hit right at the right time. Europe, Africa. I think a little bit of Australia was listed on the list on this one too. So this one's going to get a good chunk of the world we'll be able to see it. But yeah, it's kind of cool about lunar eclipses. Everyone can see them. Solar eclipses, you have to be caught up in that pathway. Another cool thing about this one also is it lasts a while. Lunar eclipses last considerably longer than a solar eclipse. You remember that one? We had four minutes roughly. Yeah. When I was in Fredericksburg super, for super that. Short. <laughs> it was cloudy, but we got a brief glimpse of it in Fredericksburg, but it was, we had four total minutes of like real, real darkness right in the center of the path, which is really, really cool. This one, uh, it, it's going to last a couple of hours. It peaks, I think it's like 944. It peaks, it starts at around 744 and ends around 11. So it's like, you know, between that period, you're going to get a pretty good view of, of the eclipse. It's a partial eclipse again. So it's, it's not as awe-inspiring as the total solar eclipse, but Pretty cool. I think it's pretty neat. I think it's pretty neat. And it's a super moon, so you can get a really good view of it just because the proximity of the moon to the planet. And then uh, it's the harvest moon, which is just a neat fact. It has nothing really to do with, with anything <laughs> scientific at all. It's As a you can cute see, yeah. name. <laughs> it's a cute name. It's the harvest moon. We like it. It's nice. It gives us a rem reminder that, hey, fall is kind of sort of almost here. It's still in the 90s outside, but let's let's all fool ourselves. So would you say around 944, 945 is the best time to go out and actually look at it? Yeah, between like 930 and 10, you should get a pretty good view. I mean, you can probably go out between 9 and, and 11 and get a pretty decent view of it, honestly. Because it moves slow. It does move slow. And also the the distance from the moon from the Earth could increase the length. So it's actually shorter a little bit because it's closer to the Earth. If it's further out, it'll get caught in the Earth's shadow longer. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is there's actually several different types of lunar eclipses. Kind of like solar eclipses. There's partial solar eclipses and total solar eclipses. Here there are partial, total, and then penumbral. I'm never going to say this right. It's called a uh, penumbral. Penumbral. Basically, what it means is uh, it gets caught. The moon gets caught in the edges of the Earth's shadow, but not the full shadow. So it gets some a dimming effect, where the moon just looks a little darker, but isn't like it would be with partial, where you actually see a chunk taken out of it and kind of turned red, which is pretty cool. Yeah, here on your article that you wrote up about the supermoon. I kind of saw this graphic that you added into it, and mm -hmm. it's pretty interesting. It has all the phases right. of the... Is this a supermoon? That is going to be our partial eclipse there. So you'll oh, see okay. it, like, as it'll get chunks taken out. And then once it gets kind of the, to the center of the shadow of the Earth, it'll turn red, and then it'll kind of go back to that chunks mm. taken out kind of phase. So it, once it reaches that... It has to hit, hit that center point of the shadow before the light kind of refracts on it and hits it in the right way to turn it that red color. So it's only going to be that red color for just a little bit. Just a little bit, but not not too short a period. Yeah, it's going to be long enough you'll be able to walk out and look at it. And, and like I said, you don't need special glasses. All you just need is no clouds. So let's hope that there are no clouds during the peak of the partial eclipse, but that's about all we, all we really need to worry about. It's kind of nice out tonight. Yeah. I'll, I think I'll walk the dogs right around then. That'll be a good time for it. So, yeah. A late night walk. <laughs> a late night walk. That's pretty late for me. I usually, on Wednesdays, I come into work at 4 a.m., 
So I'll definitely be up a little bit, but it'll be fun. It'll be an easy one for everybody involved. And maybe you'll see the moon on your way to work too. Oh, oh yeah, you can get on the way in. Uh, frequently, I can see it on both ways in. Again, because it's kind of closer to the horizon during mm -hmm. this time of year. Easier to spot during during sunset and sunrise. So pretty cool. Yeah. Now, I know what a blood moon is. Is this kind of similar or is it very different? It is a blood moon, but not fully. Usually a blood moon is like the full total lunar eclipse. Mm -hmm. and keep in mind, a blood moon is not a scientific term. It's just a cool term. <laughs> it's just a good way to describe it. It's not a real thing. It doesn't do anything. It's just that's what happens when the light hits it in that correct way and turns it that red. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, pretty cool thing. Good name for it. We'll get a partial blood moon, you know, a half blood moon. Feels like a Harry Potter book or something. <laughs> uh, well, another thing, I'm familiar with out there too, because it's a super moon, or actually our tides get impacted a little bit. So if you know the moon impacts our tides, mm -hmm. uh, we actually, tides will increase by like an inch or two as they roll in because of the proximity of the moon towards the earth, which is pretty cool. Nothing, no other major effects. The world's not going to change overnight or anything like that. Just a cool day. <laughs> tides will be up a little bit, but you'll get a chance to see it tonight. Start around 7.44, ends at around 11, almost midnight. Catch it during that time. Like I guess between 9 and 11, you should get a pretty good view of it. Awesome. And I've also heard that the um, lunar phases kind of mess with the animal life that we have here on Earth. Is that true? You know, I know a full moon, a lot of animals do react to it for mm -hmm. sure. But it's also part of like a 28-day cycle, right? So I think they do react to it. But uh, I haven't seen any scientific evidence of it. However, I do remember during the total solar eclipse, some animals had interesting reactions. Some thought it was like bedtime. Some would, uh, <laughs> I remember turtles and another, like a type of monkey uh, practiced uh, mating behaviors. What? So, yep, yep. That's one of my favorite fun facts. So I like to just throw that out there where I can. They, they've uh, witnessed this at a couple of zoos and they were doing more research on this last eclipse. It's not like there's a lot of eclipses for them to do research during, but a lot of them, a lot of animals will just go to bed and they'll, <laughs> their uh, circadian rhythms will get thrown off, which is kind of crazy. I think it's I think it's fun how animals react to these events. A lot of them. I was talking to an owner of a rhinoceros. Of during the owner the, of a rhinoceros. Yes, at the rhinery down there by Fredericksburg, <laughs> and she said these big animals like rhinos that have been on the earth for 20, 30, 40 thousand years or whatever these long stretches, millions of years for some of them. Uh, they don't react to these sort of events at all. They're kind of just used to it. It's 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 us humans who have been here just such a short amount of time. We're the ones who are like, oh no, yeah. look at that. It's pretty cool. So yeah. I also think humans react to full moons in different ways as well. I I have witnessed people. Yeah, they kind of get a little antsy around the full moon. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's maybe we just use it as an excuse. Yeah, to, for everything to behave irresponsibly. <laughs> well, it's a full moon. Mercury's in retrograde. I'm a Capricorn. All these things <laughs> we use. I'm not a Capricorn, by the way. Don't ever put me in the Capricorn bucket. Uh, those things we just use to justify our actions in different ways. So, yeah, whatever it takes, I guess. We, we, we like excuses as a species, don't we? Yeah, we do. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> well, is there anything else you want to share about this super moon we should expect to see later tonight? Pretty cool. Go take a look at it. Pretty awesome. It'll be a good view. The last one we're going to get until next year. So uh, while well, you got the chance, take some pictures, send them in, report it at kxan.com. We'll put them on air tomorrow. And can you remind us of what times this is going to be um, visible to us? Yeah, it starts around 744, 45 or in there. It's going to peak in the 9 o'clock hour. It'll wrap up right before midnight. So just go outside, check it out. Uh, it'll be near your horizon early in the night and then kind of move up a little bit. But yeah, not, not a whole lot, just a little bit. Uh, easy, easy to spot. Don't need anything special for it. No special glasses, no special goggles, no lenses or anything like that. If you do wear those things, the eclipse glasses from the last eclipse, you won't be able to see them. They're designed to prevent the sun's rays from penetrating your eyes, and this is not anywhere near as bright as the sun. So you'll get a cool view of this. It'll be a nice little reddish haze around the, the peak of it. You'll see some chunks taken out of it before then. Uh, yeah, pretty neat. Take a look. Super moon. Super moon, <laughs> super moon, harvest moon, partial eclipse, all in one night. Pretty weird to get all those things synced up in that way. Yeah. But uh, here we are. So let's do it. Let's enjoy it. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, Eric. Of course. Thank you for having me. And that's all we have for you all tonight. Remember that you can catch more of his story on our website, kxan.com. He has more details and all the times you need to know to be able to go out and watch this super moon. Thanks so much for joining us. Once again, I'm Esmeralda Zamora and this was KXAN Live.